Fall is here and the weather is as cool as the art we have to share. In this episode, we check out NextFest, where art and activism come together. Talk with the DC muralist making her own path in the art world and immerse ourselves in the world of Mexican geniuses, all right here on Artico. Welcome to this edition of Artico. It's a new season. Let's get to it. So Next Fest is uh, Capital Bop. Next Fest. We're an organization that started back in 2010, dedicated to preserving, promoting, and presenting jazz in Washington D.C. Uh, Next Fest is our second annual festival that we're promoting ourselves. This is our opportunity, our moment to uh, present our work, but also present the work of. Uh, DC's beautiful legacy of music, history, and culture. And so to have people out here in one place enjoying DC's homegrown music, go go, and indulging in the beauty of jazz music and pushing DC statement at the same time, it really is just a mass made in heaven. And I think the message couldn't come across any better or clearer when you merge those two things together. So I'm a musician, also myself. Um, we're organizers, we organize people, we organize the community around our shows, around um, our, our vibe as musicians, the, the kind of information and um, energy that we put out there. So we have the, the platform, we've created our own platforms to reach people with vital information. The music has been curated so wonderfully, so I wanted to curate the intellectual portion in a way that complemented it that took it just from, not just from performance, but to, so to invite the audience to engage with, to think about culture, its role in our lives, and how culture directly relates to our identity and our, that spurs, how it spurs us to action. So moving to statehood would significantly empower Washingtonians, the people who love this city, to determine for themselves how they're gonna move in self-determination, self-governance, and an understanding of how to just have a better say-so in how this nation moves. And the importance of the culture in that is that culture as a way of, of encouraging the soul, of helping you remember who you are and what you're fighting for and why you're fighting in the first place, it improves morale, it helps clarify the message, and it helps us transmit messages from generation to generation. So that's why it's so important to make sure we offset uh, our, our entertainment consumption with our intellectual engagement and ultimately with our civic participation. Any movement that has a lot of people like rallying behind it must have some type of meaning. And um, even though I'm not fully learned in the cultural significance behind it, I can understand why a group of people would want to have their voices heard and for them to have important say in like the um, taxes and like laws that are levied against its people. So I definitely believe like, yes, I think that it is a important issue. I think we're doing all the legwork right now just by being GoGo musicians and representing GoGo to the fullest. You feel what I'm saying? And we just recently got GoGo passed as the official sound of DC. So those are like the first steps, you know, of integrating the sound and music of GoGo and the GoGo community into statehood. You know what I'm saying? Because if, as soon as we turn it into a state, guess what? The first sound you're gonna hear is Chuck playing on the radio or UCB on the radio. So it's gonna be a vibe, you know, once this statehood thing goes through. It's an organizing space, specifically jazz and uh, go-go and other forms of black uh, improvised music specifically, holds a special power uh, within the context of music in general, that immediacy, that urgency, that uh, vitality that that is, uh, in, within the music in general, that, that is innate to the music. Uh, in order to make the music, you have to come from this, from this mindset. So it has the power to, to lift up the consciousness. It has the power to, to expose people to things that haven't happened before, quite honestly. And so that, that allows these uh, bigger messages to be more readily accepted for people. So when we're talking about statehood, when we're talking about 
you know, gentrification and when we're talking about, um, you know, housing, when we're talking about all these different issues that are pertaining to the community within the context of the music, it's like we're, we're priming people with, with the music in order to receive the, the greater messages and, and hopefully act on it. Music's always been a, music has always been a vehicle for, uh, for social change and activism. And I feel like Go-Go being like the native Washingtonian kind of sound, it is, it is the, the best vehicle for that, uh, at least musically, for statehood and other social change within the district and just social awareness of like, cause like the city is changing. Um, I think that's not a secret to anybody, but like as it changes, it's good to keep the native voice like, like loud and then loud in people's ear. It's like, you know, people move to the city and they don't necessarily know the story behind it. I think it's very important that people understand that like this city has its own culture and it is, it is a, uh, it's got a long history, and the people who, who were born in these neighborhoods, these neighborhoods around here, and everywhere in the Northwest, all the quadrants, they need to understand, like, you know, the city's, the city's got a, a history. There's, there's a legacy of uh, struggle that, that folks need to understand when they come here. Artistic activism is all over the world. We always know um, propaganda and influencers are what is gonna drive and shape political culture. We've seen that from Hitler till now. Like we're, and that's just gonna be what happens in reality and in life. Um, artistic activism is really rooted in the people. So governments are created, and so people do have to come out and in some type of way, shape, or form, get people to mobilize behind what they're doing. The easiest way in any time is always gonna be through art. So artistic activism for DC really just makes sense with it being go-go, kind of being the nucleus, and now the official music of DC, using that nucleus to really intersect politics and culture, and how we can recognize that across the nation, you know, demanding this need for statehood. The go-go community has to be at the table, so that way we can ensure economic development. The social and economic development, that's really what the goal and the focus is. Because if we don't tie into what this money is, because it's billions of dollars in the city, and they have to pay attention to the go-go community. And what I mean by that, investing more into the go-go community, investing into programming, investing in the programming that's going to go directly into the communities that have been impoverished. You feel what I'm saying? So that's the biggest thing, because they're already pushing us out. So we gotta save the people that's here. You feel what I'm saying? So as much as we can, we're gonna do it through music, we're gonna do it through our message, we're gonna do it through our presence, and we're gonna keep this thing pushing. My hope is that Washingtonians will discover more about themselves and their history and their transplants as well, that they'll understand more of the deep, deep legacies of art, activism, culture, that, are, that exist here in the city, that will learn our history, that will understand where we come from, who we are, and that we'll be inspired to continue to dream and we'll be empowered to think about a new path toward our own freedom. WHUT, I'm Morgan Wood, and we're standing outside of Whitfield Studios. So much to see here today. We're gonna experience the Mexican Geniuses exhibit. Please join me. Hi, I'm Morgan Wood, WHU-TV, and this is Artico. Today, I'm joined with the wonderful Bernardo Novell. Thanks for joining me today. You are wonderful. Thank you so much for this time. I'm very happy and excited to be with you. No, the feeling is so mutual. So we're sitting here in the Mexican Genius exhibit, and um, there's just so much going on around me. Can you just tell me a little bit about what's going on? Of course. Why? I can explain you and I can tell you many things about my country, mm -hmm. but we are here around and surrounded by Mexican geniuses, Frida Kahlo mm -hmm. and Diego Rivera. So this exhibition is uh, opening and now we are doing this exhibition in DC mm -hmm. for the first time in the States. Oh nice. And we are happy, we are very happy. Well welcome, welcome to DC and thanks for bringing all of this here so that we could learn more. Tell me a little bit more about Frida and Diego. As you know, they used to be very 
famous and popular because they create a movement in Mexico, mm -hmm. especially Diego Rivera. He created the most important movement about art in our country. We are celebrating this year 100 years of, of this movement called mm -hmm. muralism. So the technique and all the huge uh, murals in Mexico mm -hmm. made by Diego Rivera are another artist who represents this movement. So Diego Rivera used to be and still one of the most important ambassadors of culture in our country. And Frida Kahlo. Right. Who doesn't know the face, Who right? doesn't know the face about Frida Kahlo right. who represents many women. Right. She's the icon of feminism. She is the icon of many other vulnerable people and of course she represents uh, the pain of a woman but the happiness of a woman and also the creative mind behind Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo used to be like a woman uh, from a very important family in Mexico of artists. Mm -hmm. uh, her dad used to be a photographer, one of the most important photographers in that uh, time. Mm -hmm. And Diego Rivera used to be the, the artist of Mexico, the most important artist and, and painter of the country mm -hmm. with muralism and everything. Used to be married with the woman before and then he found and he met Frida and you know, this story of love began. This is very important to understand. Frida Kahlo was supported by Diego Rivera all her career. Mm -hmm. All the inspiration right. came from Diego Rivera. And they and, painted each and other. They painted each other. And you know, the, the, then they paint a lot of things together. Mm -hmm. And they create a storytelling about the Mexican time, you know, the, the poverty. They, they made many things with uh, the Mexican biodiversity, for example, or the many icons of the country that today are traveling around the world. Now tell me a little bit more about Frida painting herself so much. Why do you think she did that? It was complicated. He, he, he had an accident, a terrible accident, mm. uh, in Mexico City, in Coyoacán, this region of the Blue House that you can see in the facades around the exhibition. Okay. Uh, the Blue House is the, the, used to be the house of Carlos' family, mm -hmm. and Frida used to live there almost all her life, mm. in the Blue House. And after the accident in a bus in Mexico City, she used to be uh, in bed all, all her life. Mm -hmm. So it used to be painting in the bed and mm -hmm. reflecting in a mirror uh, uh, in, in her bed. So that's why she used to be like only creating uh, self-portraits right. of Frida Kahlo. Yeah. This is an icon of the detail of Dream of a Sunday Afternoon in our main plaza in the city, Alameda Central. So. This is the representation that I can show you later, mm -hmm. a huge mural replica that we have here that you can see and feel how was the Mexico in that time. Nice. And and look at this yin-yang, who's got in there? Yeah, 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 this is the balance of the life. Okay. The black and white. Mm. And now we can... I can show you the embroidery, the color of Me the colors of Mexico, mm -hmm. and of course we have the embroidery and the work handmade by many women in the country. And this is, uh, these chairs uh, are made in a region of Mexico called Jalisco. Jalisco. Where is Guadalajara, the tequila, mm -hmm. the mariachi, and for example, the Mexican music, that very, they are very popular because of mariachi. And we have some replicas of the corset of Frida Kahlo after the accident. Oh, this wow. orthopedic corset who supports Frida many times. And here I have you a surprise. Long life, life Frida Kahlo. This is part of her diary, mm. diary fragments that she used to wrote. And we have it here around all the exhibition to create this atmosphere mm. uh, between Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. So we have here different uh, works of Frida Kahlo, who represents many things in that time. For example, communism, Marxism will give health 
to the to the stick. This is one of the most important paints that Frida made in 1954. We have she and the others, two nudes in the forest, and we have the frame of international recognition of this uh, beautiful work inspired of André Breton and Marcel Duchamp in the Surrealism, because Frida also made many things representing Surrealism. You can see here the nightmare, uh, like very close to the movement that you, we used to, to, to know. So come and discover this immersive experience about Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. Look at this beautiful place, this gallery. It's very immersive, you can feel, you can feel the music, you can smell Mexico, and even you can understand our history, our heritage, yeah. and our two ambassadors of arts and culture. So then you can see part of the history, but also our colors, and I need to recognize the work of our creative minds behind this show. We were working for two years to create this exhibition. Women, uh, people from all over the country creating with video artists this exhibition that you can feel and see all around. Welcome to a new season of Artico. I'm your host, Asia, and joining me today is one of my favorite muralists, Mia Duvall. Hey, Mia. Hey, Asia. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good, good, good. See, we got the big hair, don't care memo. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I told everyone you are my favorite muralist. Now, you gotta explain to everybody what exactly is a muralist, right? Mm -hmm. And how did you even start? Oh, wow. That's a tall one. Um, murals are basically large scale paintings mm -hmm. um, that are done on walls. How I got started, um, how can I put it? I've been an artist pretty much all of my life, like most of us who enjoy art. Right. However, when I was younger, I just wanted to paint big things. Okay. So when I was in elementary school, I spent a lot of time with my art teacher and she would let me paint the backdrops for our programs. And then I think in sixth grade, my teacher used to allow me to paint the doors and that just like sparked something in me. Okay. So fast forward to I think my last year of high school, I think my first, not my first, but one of my summer jobs was being a muralist assistant at okay. the Latin American Youth Center. Okay. And we spent that summer just going around Columbia Heights. <laughs> learning how to paint murals and so that just like bit me and it just stuck. You know, being an adult, um, studying graphic design, being a professional, I had a job as an art director mm -hmm. um, for a local nonprofit organization and one of the teaching artists happened to be a muralist okay. and he had amazing work and it was dope but I felt like he wasn't getting the love that he deserved okay. and so basically we just started working together and I became the art director and collaborating artist. And then in about 2018, I struck out on my own and started doing my own work. And so from there, I've just been building. building up. I think I started following you in the early two, like 2020s, but I went back on your page and I saw some of your work. And I noticed that you've been working with Anacostia, you've been working with other organizations here in the DMV. Tell us a little bit about that. How did that all begin? Whew. So I guess it all goes back to, um, Initially coming in as a collaborating artist, mm -hmm. I built relationships mm -hmm. and, um, you know, doing good work and having a dope personality. Right. I feel like it takes you far because of those beautiful connections I made. And I mean that because I have an amazing network of people um, that support what I do. It just turned into opportunities. We're doing murals for the DC public school system to doing murals for busboys and poets. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why everything is escaping me, but it's just like, just having those opportunities, I feel like is really a testament to, you know, who I am, but more importantly, the work that I do. And it's funny that you mentioned Busboys and Poets, because I was just there, what, two nights ago, when Angela Davis was here in the DMV, and that is the first thing you see when you walk in that building, is you see that beautiful mural yes. above the bar, 
and that is all your work. Yeah. How does that make you feel when you walk in? Amazing. I know, right? Yeah, That's yeah. It's a staple. It, it really is, because I'll tell you, for me, I'm a native Washingtonian. Okay. And I'm native to East of the River. I'm native to Anacostia. Okay. Like, um, my family, we I think we've been in that area for about six generations now. Oh, wow. Um, so to have busboys come to downtown Anacostia um, was major. Mm -hmm. Because um, we don't have things like that over there. Right. We just haven't. Right. And to be chosen, because a lot of these commissions are actually bids um, okay. or competitions, if you will. Okay. And so for my work to be chosen, to be put into Anacostia, the, I'm sorry, to be put into the Anacostia Busboys and Poets mm -hmm. was like major and stellar, um, simply because, like I said, this is... This was my dream. Right, right. <laughs> to create, to do murals, and then to be able to do a piece in Busboys and Poets, which is probably my favorite restaurant, if not one of my favorite Absolutely. restaurants. Um, and it's not just for the food. The food, it's the culture. So how do you actually determine who um, who you're actually going to paint? Because you've done Aaliyah, you've done Marvin Gaye, you've done Tupac, you've done you know several artists. What inspires me? Yeah, what, what, how do you actually say I'm going to paint this person today? Because you paint every day, right? Basically, yeah. <laughs> um, what it, how do I figure it out? Well, first, uh, I really got into painting popular people or celebrities um, just to pay homage, okay. you know? Okay. Um, because it started with the mural work. So, Again, I love portraits, and during the murals, when you're commissioned to do the work, in most cases, the work has to have a narrative, mm -hmm. you know? So oftentimes, my pieces start with a story. So I'm super excited to actually witness and see your actual work. I know that this must be amazing to come out here and see this beautiful work of art. Tell us a little bit about this and how this all transpired. So this uh, piece is I called- I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Say it with your chest. So you basically, know. this was commissioned by uh, Red Brick, I believe, which is the company that's developing this entire area. And this area is called the Bridge District. Okay. So it's a new community that's coming up over here, east of the river. And I got the opportunity to submit my work um, kind of like competition style okay. and they chose it um, because they liked you know the elements for me it's all about representation and community right um, and for everybody to you know like look at it and feel something or see something or identify with something or better yet just to see themselves in it or somebody they know absolutely right <laughs> so absolutely. so this was all your vision you created this before it actually hit the wall. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So okay. that's part of the process. Um, I try to do a as detailed sketch as possible because I know sometimes people need a little help with the vision. Mm -hmm. um, but I do a sketch. Uh, they chose mine. Mm -hmm. And then I do a color rendering. Okay. And then a lot of times we start out with an idea, but as time goes on, it morphs into something else. So in terms of the color, this is like a combination of the Bridge District palette okay. and when Sandlot moved in. But if you've noticed, it's throughout this piece, there's a lot of natural elements mm -hmm. um, with the tall grass um, and the dragonflies. Because one thing that people aren't really clear about is this is a nature-filled area. Right. We literally, if you live here, you literally live in a system of parks. Public art is near and dear to me. So I like to create work that people who have to see this every day can enjoy right. every single day. And some might say, oh, a lot of your work is a color riot. I love color riots. Yeah. But it has a purpose. <laughs> it has a meaning. And it's warm and it's inviting. And for the most part, I always have this experience where I don't care what it is I've ever contributed to or I've done myself. When it comes to these portraits and these people, somebody always says, this looks like somebody I know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That looks like, or they say, who is that? Presentation is important to me. Um, 
and that's just that. I like to make sure that when I come into a community, um, that whatever I do is representative of that community. And that's why this right here is so important. Right. It's a Ward 8 it's thing. It's a Ward 8 thing. It's just like, it's holding it down throw it up. Eight. It's a Ward 8 thing, <laughs> sincerely. Um, and a lot of people don't know doing. in terms of like Washington, D.C., but even east of the river, folks come in all walks of life. They do. This is so amazing. There's your beautiful so picture. Meet the artist. Tells us a little bit about who you are. But look, this is how we can follow you. That's amazing. Yep. Facebook, Mia Duval Studios. Instagram and or Twitter. Mia underscore Duval. So that's it, family. Another episode of Artico. Again, I'm your host, Asia, and you can follow me at Always Ask Asia on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Until we meet again, stay blessed and keep watching Artico. Produced by WHUT and made possible by contributions from viewers like you. For more information on this program or any other program, please visit our website at whut.org. Thank you.